each time I see my account hitting new milestones, I'm excited. Not just because of that dopamine hit, but also because it gives me a fresh hope for rewilding. There are many people out there making great rewilding content. Mossy Earth creates fantastic videos. Isabella Tree and Ben. It's easy to look at those talented creators and wonder what more there is to add. To paraphrase Bo Burnham, white British guys have had the floor for at least 400 years, so maybe I should just shut that. Just listen. Ignore the plane. Just like listen. The plane's almost gone now. I'm out on the rewilding project. It's evening and it's just full of birdsong out here. It's incredible. Rewilding is something that affects all of us because it genuinely matters. It addresses a real problem, biodiversity decline, that has an impact on every last one of us. Rewilding in the past might have been, as Monty Don put it, just toss, but now it's a movement that's opening up landscapes, not closing them down. It's creating jobs in rural areas, improving access to green spaces in towns and cities, and addressing climate change on a global scale. Biodiversity is not just a nice to have either. It's essential for the productivity of our farmland, for our well-being, our health. All along the uh, verges here we get grass snakes. You design the interventions at the beginning based on what the landscape's like around it. And part of the way in which I've designed these interventions is because I know that there's grass snakes in the area and I know that they'll benefit from having an ecosystem which is designed in this way with ponds with lots of marginal vegetation. My son who's eight, he, he found one last year, he was walking along the edges and he found one, he was so excited. To balance out our impact, we need to couple regenerative agriculture to rewilding and share the land between these two systems. This could have a better result for nature and for us. Because at the end of the day, we are nature. We also need to recognise that the TOFs still own large tracts of our countryside in the UK. This is land ripe for rewilding, which currently has very little value in terms of productivity or biodiversity. I'm talking, of course, about grouse moors, which in 2019 made up 8% of British land. In South America, investors have been buying up land for rewilding for years. In a way, it feels a little bit colonial, and I wish they'd focus the same efforts over here. We've got breeding lesser white throats here, or at least I think they're breeding. There's, they're just shouting from every single bush recently, and they're quite a rare breeding bird in the UK, so it's so exciting to, to have them back. They were here last year, because of the really thick hedges and they're here again this year and they're here in more numbers than they were last year. It's just, it's fantastic. It's just great to, to see this happening in the, you know, in the British countryside, just this, just biodiversity, just recovering, just bursting back, you know. My idea of a rewilded estate is about people as much as it is about nature. It's about creating landscapes that benefit us all. Landscapes with public access, new jobs, higher biodiversity and protection for our heritage. Old orchards, stone walls, hedge laying, rare breeds, the kind of British traditions we can actually be proud of. This is what national parks were meant to be, and yet they failed to provide this protection. Nature is depleted, heritage left on the margins, and access is increasingly under threat. So, why not join me? Follow along, help me understand where I'm wrong and guide me towards what is right. I'm so grateful for the guidance and insights I get from each and every one of you in comments, in messages and emails. I'm here to celebrate 10,000 followers, but the number is arbitrary. Each and every one of you gives me hope for what rewilding is to become. This is an amazing community and I'm excited to be a part of it. Thank you. I know my dad's gonna watch this and his first comment will be, you should have shaved Chris. And you know what dad, you're right, I should have shaved.